We are in Montreux, Switzerland. It is a dreamlike location on the Lake Geneva shoreline surrounded by snow-capped mountains. Montreux is known for its fabulous jazz festival and is mentioned in the song Smoke on the Water. What is not that well known is what happened on May 30th, 2019 at the Montreux Palace Hotel. This is the sound of Bilderberg. The thing that most people do not know is that the Bilderberg meeting has been taking place since 1954 and is attended by very influential people from the areas of politics, high-tech, education, media, military, and finance. Many are CEOs of global corporations or international organizations. The Bilderberg meeting is a type of roundtable group formed from the mold of the Royal Institute of International Affairs, which Cecil Rhodes conceptualized more than 100 years ago. The organization can be considered an advocacy group, but unfortunately not like the regulated ones. What differentiates them is that all discussions fall under Chatham House rules, providing no transparency to the outside world. The discussion points for this year's meeting were a stable strategic order, what's next for Europe, climate change and sustainability, China, Russia, the future of capitalism, Brexit, the ethics of artificial intelligence, the weaponization of social media, the importance of space, and cyber threats. A lot to talk about in a four-day meeting. Since it was safe to assume that media coverage of this event by the mainstream press would be almost non-existent, we decided to pay Bilderberg a visit and see what was going on for ourselves. We arrived on Thursday at about 9.30 in the morning to catch the attendees arriving on the first day. To our luck, the skies were blue and the temperature was ideal. The Palace Hotel is a massive complex spanning from the shoreline up the hill, across a street, and further on up. The main entrance is along a parallel street farthest from the water, where we decided to get our first impressions. Upon arrival, there were approximately 15 Swiss police guarding the entrance. This was standard procedure at all times throughout the day. There were further security guards wearing military-style caps inside the property who apparently had other responsibilities. At first, the police welcomed us very friendly in French, German, English, and even Italian. But later, they were not that open to further contact. Interestingly, the police, whom we had a chance to speak to, did not exactly know what the Bilderberg Conference even was. Their primary focus was to secure the building and to ensure that only people with the right badges and credentials were allowed entry to the grounds. Unlike the G8 summits, where usually thousands of people come to protest, there were initially only two demonstrators there. Groups like Attack or Antifa were nowhere to be found. Walking around the hotel, there were police or security guards at every corner. The places on the hotel where windows normally would have allowed one to peek in were fully hidden by potted plants. The only interesting thing besides the main entrance was a separate entrance to the parking garage and another entrance which seemed to be used by members of staff. In the beginning, we had a perfect view across the street, through the gate, past the security guards, onto the entrance. Giorgio Bombasui, one of the early journalists on the scene, was able to take the first pictures of participants as they arrived. While the participants were slowly arriving, one by one in black Mercedes limousines, to the Montreux Palace Hotel, the oldest member of the steering committee, Henry Kissinger, suddenly rolled out of the main entrance in his wheelchair. He got carried into the back seat of a van and was headed out of the hotel. We were standing at the exit and filmed him when he came out the gate. Then the well-known Bilderberg reporter, Charlie Skelton, arrived. 
armed with a hat to protect against the sun and a camera to follow Henri de Castry, chairman of the steering committee, who had just exited the hotel to go for a walk. Everything was just great. We had a clear view on the entrance and the exit. So far, the police let us walk up to the gate and take pictures. Then suddenly, the security managers of the private hotel guards came out and reviewed the situation. It did not take long until a large white van pulled up and gardening workers stepped out. They opened the back doors of the van and started unloading. One after another, they pulled out plants and carefully placed them directly in our view of the entrance. At the time they were finished unloading, we had a harder time seeing through the bushes to take pictures, but we could still manage a direct view. Then they came around the corner a second time with the mother of all flower pots to put an end to our ability to take pictures. A few minutes later, John Micklethwaite the editor-in-chief of Bloomberg walked right past the plants and out the main entrance. Our cameras were waiting. Up until now, everything was peaceful, besides the one German-speaking protester from the Swiss People's Party. Who every time a black limousine took a turn towards the entrance of the hotel, was consistently heckling each of the arriving Bilderberg attendees with slogans like traitors, warmongers, high financial criminals, USA puppets, get out of Switzerland, and other things we will not translate for legal purposes. Then out of nowhere, Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google, came walking down the street. One of the protesters suggested that Eric Schmidt took over the role of David Rockefeller at the Bilderberg meetings. His driver surely was nervous, and so he forgot to unlock the passenger door to let him in. Meanwhile, our lone vocal protester gave him a few words of encouragement. Shame on you! Go home! With our view now obscured, we moved aside and used the remaining gaps in the system, a tiny slot under the camouflaged fence. After a short while, two people came with a ladder. At first we cheered, thinking that these were protesters coming to take pictures over the fence, but suddenly they walked right past the security guards and turned out to be workers tasked to close the slot under the fence with additional view protections. Soon the police informed us that the protesters and journalists were no longer allowed to stay on their side of the street. First they put a warning tape between two signs to define the restricted area in which we were supposed to stay. Finally, they replaced the tape by a metal fence. Our chances for further photos were now essentially zero, so it was good that we had arrived early and at least gotten something. By coincidence, we spotted a young lady who earlier on had been smoking a cigarette on her elevated balcony of the apartment house across the street from the main hotel entrance. When she left the house, we chatted her up, and her curiosity convinced her to let us use her balcony. When we got up there, we were greeted with a direct view to the entrance of the hotel. Next, we invited Charlie Skelton, Giorgio Bombasoi, and Marco from We Are Change Rotterdam to come upstairs with us, since they were better equipped than us with cameras. This was a dream come true for any reporter. So there we were in the burning sun, getting served hot coffee from a young lady and taking great shots from all the arriving participants. Security had not calculated with this and had no way to block our view. They must have been infuriated. We have to thank this brave woman for saving this year's Bilderberg press coverage. 
We spent the afternoon taking pictures of about 40 to 50 of the attendees as they arrived. Among those who we saw were Matthias Dirkner, CEO of Axel Springer, Peter Thiel, president of Thiel Capital, Dieter Czechke, former chairman of Daimler AG, Ursula von der Leyen, defense minister of Germany, Mark Carney, governor of the Bank of England, Ermer Koch, chairman of Koch Holding, and even His Majesty, the King of the Netherlands. For the high quality photos of all the attendees, we would kindly like to refer interested viewers to the work of Charlie Skelton, Giorgio Bombasoi, and Marco from We Are Change Rotterdam, who will most likely post their work as well. If you are interested to see more independent views about such events, we encourage you to get out there with your camera and do your part in obtaining first-hand information. Oh, and by the way, don't let yourself be blocked by flower pots and fences. Fight, Maletto! Sie ist